Hello everyone, welcome to the third uh, webinar organised by BIVA. Tonight's uh, talk is aimed at uh, those who are more recently into beekeeping on queen cells. Just to remind those who haven't joined us before that there's a Q&A button at the bottom of the screen and you can type in your questions during the course of the talk. At the end we will present as many of those to Roger as we can. Can I ask that you use the question and answer button rather than the raise hand as we have you know, several hundred uh, participants and it becomes unmanageable uh, if different people start talking. I'm Nick Morby, I'm the Membership Secretary and IT Secretary for BIBA. Uh, Carl is having an evening off today and now I'll hand you over to Roger Patterson. Roger. Thank you, thank you very much Nick. Um, uh, good evening everybody. Uh, and welcome to this, the third of our uh, webinars. Uh, I'll just share the screen now if I can work out how to do it. There we are from the beginning. Whoops. Um, straight away, um, I'll make uh, an apology rather than at the end. This is a new lecture for me, and uh, I thought I could um, include the queen cells um, and their uses. Um, but bearing in mind that it's for the early years, I found that I've probably got to go into more detail than I would normally, uh, so I'm going to struggle to do it all within an hour. Uh, so perhaps the uses might get, have to get left uh, until another day. Uh, so apologies for that. Uh, just before we start, really, um, uh, a reminder again that I've got a, a, um, a book, a practical um, guide. Um, it's been um, published now something like um, uh, six or eight years, and... Um, uh, uh, I, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, I also own and uh, manage Dave Cushman's website, which is reckoned to be um, one of the world's most comprehensive beekeeping websites. I'm sure you know of Dave Cushman's website. So that's the commercials out of the way. Um, many of you know um, Nell on the right hand side there and ask where, where, the, uh, where the dogs are. So here they are. Uh, there's Nell on the right and Rosie on the left, and that's um, the battle you'll get from uh, unless somebody knocks on the door. So queen cells then, <coughs> um, we can't ignore them, but um, there are an awful lot of myths and uh, misinformation about them, and they keep being recycled by various people who, um, uh, who do a bit of writing uh, occasionally, and um, it's, uh, it's a constant... Um, uh, annoyance to some of us older beekeepers that some of these um, uh, myths keep going. I will try and cover some tonight and uh, the reasons uh, why. Now queen cells, uh, they're obviously natural, <coughs> um, but uh, we can replicate that as beekeepers to what we call or what I call artificial queen cells. Uh, and that's where a lot of the so-called uh, queen rearing is done to provide the queens for, um, uh, uh, for, for commercial sale. But I'm going to concentrate on the natural ones this evening. Um, in the last 20 years or so, there's been some quite serious queen problems that have been um, experienced by a lot of experienced beekeepers worldwide. Um, quite a few things, but in general, just, uh, just three. Uh, young queens uh, being superseded very soon after um, starting laying, sometimes in their first year, sometimes uh, even after a month or two. Um, young queens failing and queens simply disappearing. Um, and at Whisper Green teaching April, um, we are on lockdown, yes, but um, I bet four of us are uh, dealing with the colonies. And this last Wednesday, we had two cases. Um, now, um, that shouldn't really happen. Uh, shouldn't really happen. Uh, I've got information on Dave Cushman's uh, website. There's also a National Honey Show video. So have a look on the National Honey Show and uh, you'll see it. I think it was 2017 I, I did that one. Now, the problem is from a fairly new beekeeper's point of view is that if they read the books, um, they won't. Uh, they won't tell you about this. Uh, these problems, so it can be uh, misleading. And there is a saying in beekeeping, a very well-worn saying, that bees don't read the books. 
Um, well, quite honestly, the books don't always include what they should do. What I'm going to tell you this evening, a lot of it you may not find in books, but it's basically from my own observations of um, 57 years uh, now uh, keeping bees. Um, some of it is uh, from uh, the older beekeepers. Some of it is, is um, stuff I've discovered myself. So natural queen cells then. Personally, I don't think they're uh, understood anywhere near enough. Um, a lot of beekeepers, um, they, uh, um, they just, ju just feel they've got to get rid of them rather than trying to understand why they're there in the first place. Um, so what do most beekeepers do when they see queen cells? If I was in a, uh, in a normal audience, um, there'd be a few people um, uh, saying panic. Well, that's very often what happens. And that is a major issue if they're inspecting the colony and they uh, go, say, a frame or two frames in, come to queen cells, immediately they cut them out. I'm suggesting to you very strongly don't cut them out. And like I say to um, people when I teach, assess on the way out, action on the way back. Because it may well be that that's the only queen cell that's in there uh, and the queen's been gone a week or, or, or 10 days and that's the only chance you've got of that colony requeening itself. So um, uh, be, be very, very careful. Now, um, queen cells in a colony actually tell you something about the colony and in fact basically every time you open a colony it's telling you something and if you've got queen cells in all you've got to do is just have a look see why they're there and um, uh, try and interpret it but having said that they can be opportunities as well because if a good colony is putting up queen cells you can use that to perhaps requeen other colonies or perhaps make up nuclei which is what I spoke about um, uh, uh, two webinars ago. So natural queen cells then, the bees build them for three very different reasons. Uh, the end result is the same, uh, a queen bee uh, that heads a colony, um, but the reasons are very different. Swarm cells, which is really colony reproduction. Emergency cells where the queen uh, goes missing for whatever reason and supersedure cells, which in normal circumstances is queen replacement uh, when she's getting to the uh, end of her useful life. So three very different uh, reasons. Unfortunately, there are a few people who um, uh, frown upon them, but I can't see why, because bees have been using those three um, uh, methods of raising queen cells uh, for millions of years, and it's only all of a sudden in the last hundred years or so that a few people decide that they're, that they're a problem. But I would reckon that probably 75% of queens in colonies in this country come from natural queen cells one, in one way uh, or another. So let's find out a bit about them then. Um, here's a chart and I thought you'd all love, lo lo love charts. Um, but I'll make it really simple so I can understand it. The uh, uh, egg, queen egg is laid uh, today, so day zero. After three days it hatches into a larva. After around eight days, possibly nine, some books will tell you, but um, I think it's probably wise to go on the cautious side, certainly with queen cells, because it can have quite serious consequences um, if you get caught out. And after 15 days, the uh, queen emerges. Maybe 16 if you read uh, some books, but work on 15. And as I've already said in one of the other webinars, they're nice and easy to remember, because all you've got to remember is the, um, uh, is the number three. Multiply three by three and you get eight. Three eights are 15. And if you remember that, um, that's, uh, that's something you've learned this evening. Now, what do you want to do with these queen cells if, um, if you want to make use of them? Well, you really ought to try, if you possibly can, and put them into 
um, another colony or nucleus or whatever before they e emerge. So try and distribute them a day, two days, or possibly a shade earlier if you, if you can. Sorry, let's go back. Uh, with natural queen cells, it's not particularly easy to, um, to tell how old they are. But if you know roughly when they get sealed, within a day or so of getting sealed, um, you know that it takes seven days um, until they emerge. So perhaps if you uh, distrib distribute them uh, five days later, you should be okay. So swarm cells then. Um, this is identification now. Um, I know what the books tell you, uh, that swarm cells are always around the outside or the bottom of the frame and supersedure cells are always on the face of it. Well, uh, they can be, but very, very often they're not. And this is one of the um, um, uh, myths or misinformation that I was uh, talking about. They are built from cell cups uh, straight away. I tend to stick to the term cell cup. Um, I know some people call them play cups, but I don't think the bees are playing at all. Um, I think they know exactly what they're, what, what they're doing. The number is um, usually more than four. Um, I think I can only ever remember seeing four in a colony, um, or oh, a handful of times in 57 years of, of, of beekeeping. Uh, up to perhaps 30 normally, but they can go uh, way, uh, way, way, way above that on, on occasions. Now they can be anywhere on the comb and I'll show you photographs of, of some that are right in the middle of the comb. So you please, please, please don't be fooled by that, um, uh, that misinformation. Now age wise, they're staggered over anything up to six to seven days, usually perhaps four, five, six uh, days. I have seen them on occasions as low as only two days but usually it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it, there's a fair amount of staggering uh, for them. Now, the great thing is that the bees actually build them for us. So if we need queen cells, um, when are the bees building them? When the colony's in absolutely tip-top condition to, to do it. So they're gonna be well-fed uh, right from the start and they're not gonna be um, uh, spread too thinly and expected to, um, uh, raise 50 queen cells when normally they'd only uh, build 10 or a dozen. They're usually quite plentiful for, for what the vast majority of beekeepers need because majority of beekeepers keep five colonies or less. I think the average in England and Wales is 4.2 colonies uh, per beekeeper. I've never yet seen anybody with 4.2 colonies, so perhaps four, four to five is the, uh, is the average then. Um, so, of course, they don't need many queen cells. If they do, they can usually find something in a swarming colony that they can cut out uh, quite easily, even if they discard uh, most of them. So, in my book, they're really good for what I call the ordinary beekeeper, um, and that is um, probably 70 or 80 percent of us who aren't, um, uh, aren't commercial in, in some way. Even then, I mean, I've raised probably 100 queens this year already. Um, and if uh, we haven't had very much swarming uh, in West Sussex, um, but I've, I've used swarm cells already. If they come from a good colony, use them. Now, supersedure cells, they are also from cups. So the starting of them is exactly the same. Um, now, this is... Um, my saying, not, uh, not anybody else's, but it's usually one, often two, occasionally three. And what I mean by that is there's, there's more chance of there being one than there is three. Uh, so there's, um, uh, it, it's very small numbers. They, again, can be anywhere on the comb. Forget this business about them only being on the face of the comb. On many occasions, I've seen them on... Um, uh, on the woodwork and quite often I've seen them on combs where there's absolutely no brood whatsoever. Um, I was hoping to find a photograph uh, 
for um uh to 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 show you but i uh, uh I, I couldn't find one now on the comb they're usually close together if they're not on the same side of the same comb they're usually on the same seam so you won't get one let's say three frames in from uh, your side and the other one seven or eight frames they usually be close together and a similar age too um you certainly won't get one that's um uh one that's sealed and one that's only a egg or a young larva they're very very similar in age these days since uh, in the last 20 years or so um you often see them during the summer um uh, with young queens and this is what throws people very very often um, they're not realizing that they're they're super seizure cells when they actually are and especially if they're around the edge of the comb people automatically think they're swarm cells um, they're not so emergency cells <coughs> these are built when the queen has gone she's disappeared for whatever reason and the, the bees build them on worker larva, which up to about five days from the laying of the egg is apparently identical. The first two days of uh, feeding apparently is um, identical for both workers and queens. <clears throat> I have to say they are very rare in the wild. I see them um, uh, regularly in um, managed colonies, um, but I've taken several hundred or remove several hundred colonies from wild, uh, uh, wild places, trees, buildings, that sort of thing. And where you normally in a, in, um, uh, a managed colony, uh, you can see evidence of emergency cells year to three years uh, after afterwards because the bees don't repair it. I have never ever seen that in the wild. Personally, I think they're really badly misunderstood and I'll explain uh, a little bit uh, later. Some of the so-called artificial uh, methods, uh, Miller in particular, but Ali as well, they are emergency cells. But you'll get the same people tell you to um, uh, raise queens by the Miller method. Um, uh, that would tell you that you shouldn't use uh, swarm or emergency cells. And it just doesn't make sense to me. Now, they may be difficult to cut out. Um, because they very often come from the uh, midrib. But you'll probably, in a normal colony, you'll probably get two, three, four that you could use. Um, and if it really is a problem, then just use the comb or the frame with, um, with the queen cells on. What bees do prefer to do is build on either new comb or an edge. And um, I mentioned that I've done a lot of queens this year. In fact, uh, yesterday I introduced eight and today I introduced another eight. So there's 16. And when you do those sort of numbers um, and you observe what's happening in your colony, you can see perhaps a, a, a new, let's say with, with uh, five combs, four of them, the uh, combs are relatively old and one young that's the one that the bees will um, put the um, emergency cells on because uh, if you're if you let's say take a queen away from a, uh, a colony and you can't get there for another three four five days um, to replace uh, the queen or put another queen cell in of course they build their own emergency cells so recap on that <coughs> and this is important i think um swarm cells uh, their queen cells right from the start, so from cups, more than four, could be 30 plus, and built anywhere on the comb. Supersedure cells, they look exactly the same as swarm cells individually, also from cups, uh, three or less, and of the same age. Naturally, should be in the autumn, my area of West Sussex from probably back into July onwards. If you go further north, uh, probably knock a couple of weeks uh, off that. But they're often these days uh, during, the, uh, uh, during the summer. So be aware of them. Emergency cells, um, they're the ones that are built as the queen goes missing. They convert an ordinary worker larva. 
build it from the red rib um, and the bees prefer new comb or the edge of the comb and I'll give you some examples um, a little bit later. So identification then, uh, you need to have a look to see what's happening in the colony. Beekeeping is observation, 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 uh, together with some natural thinking, bit of gumption, the usual sort of things that, um, uh, that make good uh, beekeepers. Just have a look at the signs of what's in the colony, what the colony is telling you. Don't go charging off looking at books because there probably won't be anything in there. And if there was, it would probably be um, either wrong or give you a different answer anyway. You get horribly confused. Try and work it out for yourself if you can, because it should be fairly easy to do. So here's some examples um, I'll give you. This here, what sort of uh, swarm um, uh, queen cell is that? Well, it's come from a cup, so it could be a swarm or a soup procedure individually. It's what's going on around it, which will tell you what it is. So it depends on the number. Uh, so three or less, it would be soup procedure. Is that your end or my end, Nick? Sorry, it's my end. Oh, all right. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, um, three or less, it's going to be a soup procedure. Uh, four, five, ten, dozen, fifteen, twenty, it is going to be um, a swarm. Don't take any notice of the uh, 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 position uh, or the size. Now, the age, if they're very similar in age, they are going to be soup procedure. If they're staggered, they are going to be uh, a swarm. I haven't mentioned too much about size, but I keep reading and hearing that um, soup procedure cells are bigger than swarm cells. I'll talk about that in a minute. So here's a frame with uh, four uh, queen cells on. Uh, they're on the face of the comb. Uh, now, don't forget, swarm cells are supposed to be around the edge. Super procedure cells on the face of the comb. But there's more than three of them. So they are very definitely um, uh, swarm cells. The one on the bottom left, you'll see that's dimpled. <laughs> the one at the top isn't so dimpled, it's smoother. <laughs> and you may read that um, if you get smooth queen cells, um, there's something wrong with them. Well, have a look at uh, queen cells. Don't be frightened to keep opening the hive up. Have a look, and what you'll find is the one at the top, give it another couple of days, and it'll be dimpled like the one at the bottom left. And the reason is that, um, uh, and you can check this out yourself, when a queen cell is about to get sealed, it really is quite smooth. And then the bees seal it, and then they work on it, um, uh, for several days and they put the dimpling on. So there's one tip for you. The two on the right, they're fairly close together. On many occasions, I've tried to separate them with razor blades, scalpels, all sorts of things like that. But the wall thickness between them is usually so thin that you lose one or both of them. Don't mess around. Don't be mean. Just pinch one of them out and use whichever one uh, you like the look of uh, best. Um, certainly, oh, before the middle of July, there's uh, plenty of queen cells in most places. You don't, you don't have to be mean. Um, here's five queen cells on the face of a comb. Look, absolutely nothing around the edge. More than more than three. Uh, so some people say, oh yeah, they, they're super procedure. But I can tell you that they're swarm cells. These, however, are super procedure. Look, they're close together. They're not on the face of the comb. But have a look at the tips. The bees have started thinning them down, which they tend to do in the last uh, 24, uh, 36 hours. So they're both fairly uh, uh, similar in age. If they're the only ones in the colony, 100% certain they're super procedure cells. Very occasionally you'll see um, wire going through a, a cell. So if let's say you've got those two and you want one, um, uh, you want both of them, the top one, you can cut that out normally. And the bottom one, 
what you find is the wire never goes through the um, uh, through the uh, mid middle of the cell, always through the wall. You can tease it out with a sharp knife or a scalpel, um, but probably the easiest thing to do is just use the comb with the um, uh, with the queen cell on it. Uh, this is an emergency cell. Uh, you can see it's a face of comb, and the uh, cell is um, just starting to. Um, Sorry, that's my phone going. Um, uh, it's just coming out of the, um, the bees are just uh, drawing it out from the uh, surface of the, um, uh, of the comb. Um, there's another couple in a, uh, in a similar sort of uh, position. In fact, there's five there altogether. You'll see the two pairs and one on its own. Uh, you'll probably uh, only get three cells out of that, you'll, but you'll have to cut round when they're sealed, of course, you'll have to cut round the um, uh, um, uh, cut round the cell all the way through the the midrib. Notice it's a young comb look, <laughs> or perhaps the edge of the comb, just like that. Now, some people will be forgiven for thinking that they're probably swarm cells, um, but just have a look at them. They're very, very definitely emergency cells. Some things you need to know. Um, the more queen cells there are built in a colony, usually the more swarmy it is. So perhaps in uh, your apiary, you've got six colonies, let's say, you've got two preparing to swarm. One some um, got eight or ten queen cells at the point of swarming, that is. So when the first one is about to be sealed and the other one's got 40, the one that's got 40 is probably going to be far more swarmy as a colony than the other one. So if you've got a, a choice of which ones to uh, take queen cells from, if everything else is sort of reasonably equal, then um, take them from the, uh, from, from the lesser one. Um, I've got a little bit of a rule now. Um, I, um, uh, I'm taking a better dozen as my break even point. Um, it used to be 18, but now I've uh, lowered the swarming quite a bit in, um, in my bees. So now I'm coming down to about 12. So anything under 12, if it's a good colony, then I'll use it. Over 12, it's got to have um, some pretty good characteristics that perhaps uh, uh, none of the others have got. Now, if you remove queen cells, um, the bees will build more. So if, you, if you've got a colony putting up um, uh, uh, queen cells and the queen is still there, if you remove them, the chances are they will build more uh, swarm cells or, or even supersede your cells. Now, if, you've got, if you remove the queen, and let's say there are 15... Uh, swarm cells, if you remove the queen uh, at the point of swarming uh, and leave them like that, they will probably stay like that. If you perhaps move, remove a couple, that'll be okay. But if you take 10 away, the chances are they'll build another 10 to get up to that sort of number. There seems to be a number that some colonies uh, are comfortable with, and you probably won't see it in many books. Um, but there is a, uh, is a term called peak queen cell number, which I think might have been coined by the late um, B. Wolf Cooper. He's certainly only in his book, Honeybees of the British Isles. So a few myths and misinformation. I haven't got room for all of them, so they're just the common ones. How often I've heard that bees only swarm on swarm cells because that's what they're bought for, uh, built for. Um, I've had bees on many occasions swarm, leaving just supersedure cells or emergency cells. If the colony is in the right condition and the weather is right, um, probably in 80% of the cases, out they'll go. So please, please, please don't, uh, uh, 
don't believe that one. Um, I've already mentioned where queen cells are supposed to be on the comb. Um, all these things that I'm telling you, you don't have to believe me. Um, just, um, uh, just work it out for yourself. Observe it for yourself. And I think after a year or two, um, you'll, um, you, you'll realize that I was um, uh, not too far from the truth. Uh, I mentioned again, supersedure cells are bigger than swarm cells. And I do keep hearing this one, but it's very unlikely you will get supersedure cells in a colony where you've got swarm cells. So how on earth are you going to compare them? Not only that, look in a colony when it's swarming and you'll see the, um, the swarm cells are different sizes. So it just doesn't make sense. But I think it's just one of these things that people just simply cut and paste because somebody else said so. Oh dear, this one. Um, this really annoys me that beekeepers are told to leave two queen cells if they, if they do. Uh, and the reason given is insurance. In case one queen cell is dead, you've always got the other one. But there's two things against that. <laughs> one is if the um, colony's in the right condition and the weather's fine, um, the chances are the colony will actually swarm on the first one to, uh, to emerge. And um, I'm pretty certain the bees are quite good at actually leave, um, uh, keeping virgin queens apart. So, um, and even probably even uh, keeping some imprisoned um, uh, uh, until the other one's gone. The other thing is, it takes several days for a colony to realise that a queen cell is dud. And I'm talking about four, five, sometimes six. And uh, the more you're into beekeeping, the more you think to yourself, crikey, that queen cell's taken a long time to emerge. Uh, and four days later, it's still there, still sealed, cut it open, and you've got a black mush inside. So it does take bees quite a long time to... Um, realise that the queen cell is dud. So if it's dud, half your bees plus the queen that emerged is gone. So it really doesn't make sense. So um, uh, I really shouldn't believe that one. In any case, if you're going to believe it, I suggest very, very strongly that you get yourself on a local swarm list and next time somebody phones up within two miles of you saying they've got bees in their chimney, you go and sort them out because the chances are they've got to come from you. Swarm cells perpetuate swarming. I think the thinking is that if you get a colony that keeps swarming and use the queen cells, um, you'll um, perpetuate that trait. But think about it a little bit. Um, a lot of the swarming is caused by uh, beekeepers doing daft things like not putting supers on in time, leaving two queen cells, all, all sorts of things like that. And um, oh, putting the hives in full sun. So you can't really blame the bees uh, for that. But in any case, what's the difference between using swarm cells than taking larvae from that colony two or three weeks before they swarmed? None at all. Um, I really do think it's, uh, it's, a, it's an old wise tale. Um, queen, don't use queen cells that are near drone brood. Um, there's this so-called king bee that uh, uh, is supposed to exist uh, where the queen cells uh, contain drones. I can tell you that the only time in 57 years of keeping bees that I've had that happen is where you get a drone laying queen or, or a laying worker and um, they build queen cells, and of course they've got infertile eggs. I have never ever seen it, and I'm not saying it doesn't exist, um, but if there was a good queen cell right next to drone brood, um, uh, and a lot of look at it, look of it, I'll take it. Emergency queen cells uh, produce uh, scrub queens. Well, they can do, um, but I shall give you a few clues um, in a few slides time how to get over this and um, uh, it's quite easy enough I have had some really cracking queens produced with emergency cells leave unsealed queen cells and the reason I keep hearing is that the 
uh, sealed ones can be dud. But hang on a minute. In a day or two days time, the unsealed ones are going to be sealed. So why can't they be dud? I think what it is, you've probably got quite inexperienced um, beekeepers misinterpreting uh, a trick that the bees have got. And that is that very often you get um, a queen cell emerge. Um, the tip hinges down. Out comes a queen, says hello to everybody. Um, a worker bee goes in to clean out the residual raw jelly. And for some reason, absolutely no idea why, uh, apart from perhaps just a bit of mischief, the other bees put the lid back and then... Um, I say reseal it, it's um, it's not firmly uh, sealed, but certainly enough so that the wor worker bee can't um, back out. And very often, uh, even I've been, in fairly recent years, I've been fooled uh, by a queen cell with a dead worker upside down. So I think it's, um, it's uh, a misinterpretation. Now the trick, of course, is just with your fingernail or... Um, or a hive tool, just touch the tip of the queen cell if you want to leave one that's sealed. Um, and if the tip comes off easy, uh, probably what you'll find is a, is a dead worker upside down. Um, I do, however, uh, think it's quite a good idea to leave unsealed uh, a queen cells because certainly natural queen cells, you don't always know the age. And even as experienced beekeeper, I can only guess within a day or so, inexperienced beekeeper, um, uh, obviously uh, less so. So if you know it's unsealed, you know it's got at least seven days to emerge, therefore it gives you extra time. So going back to uh, this chart, um, queen cells are sealed for seven days. So if you're a weekend beekeeper, and you can't handle the bees in between, instead of having a queen cell that's going to emerge, if you leave one um, that's got a day or two days to go to sealing, it, if, you, if, you, uh, if you are a weekend beekeeper, uh, and let's say you do your beekeeping on a Saturday morning or whatever, or Sunday afternoon, if you do it the um, uh, appropriate day the following week, in theory, you shouldn't have a queen cell that emerges. So there is a, there is a good reason, but not the one that we, we're normally given. Now, what happens in a colony when a queen is removed? I know what the books will say, and I know the answer that you're supposed to give if you want to pass your exams. Um, but by accident, I found out um, uh, an alternative. I'm not saying that what's in the books doesn't happen. Um, but these are my observations and they really aren't, um, aren't shared by books. So I could queen away from a colony and depending on the size of it, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, sorry, Nick, you told me not to cough. Um, bees will normally realize within perhaps an hour or a couple of hours for a big colony. Um, the smaller the colony, the quicker they'll realize it because of course, the diminishing uh, pheromone uh, is, um, uh, is, um, uh, is, well, the pheromone then is not getting around the, the colony. Some colonies will be absolutely calm, not even raw. This afternoon, I handled eight colonies that I took the queen away from uh, three days ago within uh, probably a couple of hours of each other they were behaving differently. Some were giving a really strong roar. Others, you, you would think they're still queen right. Some colonies can be frantic in a couple of hours. And um, I've dequeened single brood chamber colonies um, that the bees within a couple of hours have been running around outside the hive and all over the roof. So they do vary uh, differently. Um, quite why, I've no idea. When do they start emergency cells? Well, this was a question in one of the exam modules um, uh, a few years ago. Uh, and uh, I have to say, I couldn't get the answer um, from, um, from the exam board because I actually wanted to know because I've done a bit of work on it. 
and it really is quite wide and I'll show you in a minute some figures. Um, some have started within about eight hours, others 48 hours and they still haven't started um, uh, emergency cells. <coughs> now, they stagger them over three to four days. Now that's not what we're told, but I can assure you that they do and I'll give you some figures in a minute. Um, we're very often told that they use larvae that are too old. They can do, but again, I'll tell you why in a minute. In my experience, they usually use young larvae if available. And you can always check this yourself. Always check it. Just have a look. When they've started forming the um, uh, queen cell, have a look at the size of the larva in, um, in the cell compared to a, um, uh, a swarm cell or a supersedure cell. Now, if you cut out any emergency cells, so after four or five days or whatever we're told uh, to do, the bees will build more. So let's say they built 15. If you then cut them down to only five, the chances are they'll build about another 10. All right, it might be eight, it might be a dozen. But um, now this, what I call the second wave, um, after the beekeepers uh, uh, cut them out, these are the ones that they start all together. I think um, because they realize their options are running short. These are the ones that are often on older larva and usually um, end up in, with uh, poorer queen cells. And this, I think, is why emergency cells have a bad reputation, simply because beekeepers are told to cut out the ones that, that get sealed first. The thinking is, which I think is erroneous, is that because they're supposed to start all at the same time, the ones that are capped first are on the older larva, whereas um, I'm pretty certain they're not. So this second wave, I don't call them emergency cells, I call them panic cells, because quite frankly, I think that's what they are. Now, on the 22nd of May, 2019, well, I'd, I'd already done a little bit of work and uh, I'd realized that, uh, that things varied quite a bit. So 22nd of May 2019, I took four colonies, A, B, C and D, that's the first column. And over six days, I went into the colony the same time every day to see what the bees had done. I shook the bees off and I, I counted them. So there was nothing, um, nothing that I missed. So this is what happened with uh, colony A. Uh, after 24 hours, no queen cells. 48 hours, no queen cells. Um, uh, three days uh, later, they put up two, um, three, five, six. So over four days, they um, they put um, uh, uh, an extra four queen cells up. Anyway, let me explain just a little bit more. Colony A was actually a swarm that came to a bait into a bait hive on the 12th of April, which is quite early. Uh, so about six weeks earlier than that. Uh, this may have been a reason why the, no lump, uh, the low number of emergency cells built. Um, before I forget it, I better mention that I think it was November 2019, BBKA News. Uh, this was an article, so you can have a look back to the back numbers and um, uh, and uh, check for yourself and you, you'll get uh, what I did as well. Colonies B, C and D, they were all very, very similar. All four colonies, um, two to three supers on, and they all had overwintered queens. So the, in fact, uh, I would assume that the um, incoming swarm was all the previous year's queen or the one before that. <laughs> Um, colony B, after, and that was the one that started with 14 on the first day, look. 14 on the first day, another 10 after two days, uh, another nine 
after three days. So they're not building them all together. I know this is only four colonies, so it's a very small sample, um, but I think there's enough to um, uh, 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 to um, uh, to say that it, it's not as simple as it's made out to be. Anyway, uh, after four days, um, three queen cells have been aborted, and you can tell that because they, the, the 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 bees have torn them down. Um, it, so they were up to thirty, down to thirty rather. Um, they clearly didn't need them all, but they decided to build another three. So one, two, three, four days afterwards. Um, <clears throat> and after five days, one queen's, one of those was aborted again, and they built another one to replace it. Seems strange, but these are not the sort of things the ordinary beekeeper notices. It's noticed by people like me who've, uh, who are inquisitive. Um, number five, um, yeah, so far, far down. Uh, Colony C, after five days, they come down from two, they, they put two up and then uh, left that number for three days and then they'd lost one and um, didn't do anything about it. But wait just a minute. Whoops, can't go. Whoa. Yeah, can't go back. But yeah. Um, yeah, they uh, uh, they did nothing about it. But then they put four up at this point here. So one, two, three, four, five days. And this one here, uh, Colony D, after five days, uh, two have been aborted for whatever reason, don't know, um, but they should have been sealed by then anyway. Um, and they, uh, they built none. So that was uh, just a simple experiment that any beekeeper could do. If you've got enough colonies, uh, just open the colonies at the same time every day and it's surprising how much you learn. <laughs> Now, if you're looking for queen cells, I suggest very strongly that you shake the uh, shake the combs. If you don't want to save the uh, queen cells, uh, you can shake like that if you like. I don't like shaking uh, in the box because I've only ever seen five queens uh, killed in 57 years. Two of them were on the same day by two different demonstrators at the same event. Uh, shaking down inside the box. So that's why I don't do it. Shake across the box like that. So if the queen happens to be on there, um, she's going straight down on in, into the box rather than uh, over the side. If you, uh, I know there's a view that you uh, will damage queen cells. Um, quite frankly, I don't think you do. Um, but for the ordinary beekeeper with only a few uh, colonies, don't risk it. I've always shook um, sh or shaken this way, hold the frame uh, lug and just give your wrist a, a, a thump. That isn't me, by the way. Um, that was me taking the photograph. It's um, those last two are our demonstrators, two of our demonstrators. And that's how most um, beekeepers at Whisper Green, or certainly the demonstrators, handle their bees. Uh, no bee suit and um, uh, no gloves. You need to be careful. You must shake bees off frames. I repeat, you must shake bees off frames. I took a long time saying that, <clears throat> hoping that you'd spot what was, um, what was there. There's the side of a brood frame with normal sort of number of bees on. Shake the bees off and what's underneath? That. Um, now, that's quite a big queen cell. Um, also have a look at it, it's smooth. That's probably because it's only just been sealed. In four days um, time, that will look a very different queen cell. Right, here's another one. Bottom end of a, a brood frame, shake the bees off, queen cell underneath. Here's another one. There's two bees covering that queen cell up. Shake the bees off and there's the queen cell. 
Now that is probably one of the second wave queen cells that I was telling you about, emergency cells. Um, that can give you a boatload of problems because it will emerge. Uh, probably will get mated, no trouble at all. Um, but you try and find it amongst workers that are roughly the same size. Here's another one that I actually took yesterday. Photograph was taken yesterday. Where's the queen cell? Push the bee out of the way. And there it is. That there is a queen cell. So you need to be very, very careful. That, that queen cell there could mean that somebody else has started beekeeping, not with a national hive, but one made out, made out of bricks. If you're cutting queen cells out and you want to use them, and I'll suggest very strongly that if you've got a, a, um, uh, a colony putting up queen cells, that is an emergency cell, by the way, but at the same point. If you've got a colony putting up queen cells, um, uh, don't just rule them out. Cut two or three of them out just in case you need them because you may at a, 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 a later date, um, you may well come across a colony that's queen, queenless or, or something of that nature. So don't just chuck them in the, into the long grass. <laughs> now, where do you put your queen cell? Um, I'm very often asked, um, well, have a look around the comb. Uh, this is obviously just under the top bar, uh, and there's a hole there. So all you need to do is just do a little bit of gardening to it. Uh, I think there's a queen cell. Yeah, there's an old, old queen cell in the way there. Move that out of the way. Take the queen cell, push it in by the comb that's at the back that you've left. Don't. Um, push it in by the queen cell because you'll damage it, you'll squash it. So there it is. And within minutes, the bees will, um, will fix that in and uh, that should emerge uh, no trouble at all. If you can't do that and you haven't got any gaps, um, then just push your thumb straight down to the midrib, draw it down a bit and uh, you've got exactly the uh, same thing. If you've got brood, <laughs> try to put it within the uh, brood area. If you haven't, because the colony has been queenless for uh, so long, then where the, um, where the brood would normally be, that is the empty cells uh, in, the, in the middle of the brood, brood nest. I'm also very often asked what size a queen cell and Quite frankly, it's difficult to say unless you've got a uh, got some in in front of you. Uh, but there's one up against a fifty pence piece. So if that gives you a little bit of a clue, uh, that's that's okay. Uh, the smaller ones, I would, if they're very much smaller, I would ignore. If they're longer and really long, don't think you're going to get a nice long queen that won't get to the queen excluder. Um, because you probably won't get a queen at all. Because what sometimes happens, not very often, but sometimes happens, is that the larva drops away from the food uh, and the bees extend the uh, side of the cell to accommodate the larva. And you can end up with them sometimes eight or 10 millimeters longer. They're obviously longer. Um, just discard them. Don't, don't, don't even think about it. So there is a, either a supersedure cell or a swarm cell. You can tell that because it's um, come from a cup because it's, uh, it's on wood. There is an emergency cell. And don't forget the half or part of the emergency cell is um, back into the midrib. Um, so that's probably quite a reasonable uh, one. That's also up against the 50 pence piece. I know it looks smaller, um, but you'll, you'll, I'm pretty certain you'll get a decent queen out of that. Now, sometimes you come across <coughs> queen cells with holes in the side. Why is that? Well, it could be that um, the, um, uh, an earlier queen has emerged and the bees have decided that they don't want any more. So they go round and uh, destroy the, um, uh, destroy the uh, uh, other queen cells. 
it could be perhaps a queen cell has been put into a colony um, and they're, they're queen right. Um, you very often get it with um, uh, laying workers. They just won't accept them. Um, I know some people say that it's the virgin queens that, um, uh, that uh, chew the holes in the side. I may do a case but I think it's very largely the, uh, the workers that do it simply because of um, circumstances. So there it is. And um, the area around the bottom here, don't be frightened to, um, to cut um, old queen cells up. Uh, what you'll find is the, uh, the cocoon down the bottom here is actually uh, pretty tough. Um, so the bees seem to find it easier, and they know it's easier to go into the uh, top here. So here's another couple um, a lot further down the road, and you can see what the, what, what the bees do, and they chew around this area here, and then they just chuck this out outside. They don't chew it up at all. Um, you can see that those haven't emerged. If they had it done, there would have been a hole in the end. So... <clears throat> If you want to put a queen cell into a colony that's either got a queen or only recently had a queen, so pheromones are still uh, going around, um, the chances are that the bees will um, uh, destroy them. So what we've got to try and do is stop the bees chewing here. So what we do is uh, find a way of covering this area up because they can't chew in the end here very easily. Can't chew in the end. So what do we do? Uh, we, we try and cover up the top of the queen cell and we call it um, uh, uh, protecting. So that's if the queen has recently been removed. So if you take a queen away and put a queen cell in straight away, the chances are within a quarter of an hour or so, uh, the bees would have uh, chewed it down. Um, up until I reckon I can get away with four hours in a, in a normal colony uh, before put, uh, putting one in. Um, if I was uh, uh, advising beginners, I'd say probably put one in the, the, uh, the, the next day. Now, the smaller the colony, um, the, uh, uh, the more you can get away with. And there are such things as little mini mating nukes. I've taken queens out of those and put... Um, uh, queen cells straight in. They realise within minutes that they're, they're, they're queenless. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, um, uh, well, certainly a, a, a normal standard nuke. So um, if you don't want to do that or can't do it, then uh, protect. So how would you do that? Well, there are various uh, gadgets for doing so, but I'm not a great one for gadgets and uh, uh, I'm advised fairly strongly that I tend to lose things. So uh, I don't want to run the risk of losing anything. Um, but this is an ideal piece of uh, kit, a piece of uh, silver foil and make sure it's metal, not plastic because um, uh, bees can chew the plastic and you can tell easy enough because if you uh, crumple it up, uh, the metal stays crumpled up and the plastic uh, recovers. And at one stage, uh, Kit Kat wrappers were made out, made out of plastic, so you couldn't use those. Anyway, get a piece of silver foil, four or five inches square, um, fold it in half one way and then half the other way. Just nip the corner off with a pair of scissors or uh, you can do it with a hive tool if, you, if your hive tool's sharp. Uh, open it out and then you end up with a little, little square like that. Put the queen cell through it and then fold the uh, foil around like that. Nice and easy look. And then put that into um, the, uh, the hive in, in, in a comb. When they emerge, this is a different one, obviously. Um, that's, that's what happens. And um, uh, they work an absolute treat. Now, I think probably from a beginner's point of view, I think I would probably advise um, protecting anyway. There's probably no need to if, if the colony's been queenless for hours or more. Um, but 
uh, you might as well do it. Now, if you've got a, a colony with a laying worker, uh, that could be difficult. So protect it and you should be able to get, um, uh, get, get away with it. So, uses then. Um, I assume you know what a test comb is, although perhaps some, uh, some don't. If you're not sure if a colony is queen right or not, uh, then usually, I don't say always, but usually if you put a frame of uh, eggs and young larva in from another colony, if it's queenless, it should start building emergency cells. I'm afraid occasionally they don't, and certainly if they've got a lame worker, they, they, they probably wouldn't. Right, so you could do exactly the same thing with a, queen, a seal queen cell. If you've got a seal queen cell, and bearing in mind that's what, what you, you need anyway to, um, to get the colony up and running. <laughs> um, if you've got a seal queen cell, put that in, have a look the following day and see if it's still intact or if it's um, uh, chewed down. If it's chewed down, the chances are they've got something that satisfies them that it's a queen. It may not actually be a queen, um, but um, it could be a lion worker or, a, or a, a, a dud queen. So there's one use. Now here's an old trick that I was taught years and years ago, and I, I just don't see people do it, do it these days. If you want to requeen a colony, <laughs> and it, this works especially well if you've got a, 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 a colony that's a bit touchy, if you can get the supers off, um, uh, just take the coin excluder off and put a protected cell down between one of the gaps between the, uh, between the combs. And I won't say all the time, but probably 70 or 80% of the time, what happens is that queen emerges and supersedes the existing queen. Um, and I've done that on several occasions with, with bad temper colonies that I just couldn't be bothered um, uh, uh, trying to find a queen uh, because if they're bad tempered, you've got to smoke them more to keep them under control. That drives a queen away. And I've, I once I've been successful every time, but certainly uh, 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 very often. So that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, Roger, we've got uh, quite a few questions coming up. The first one is just about, um, uh, is the recording going to be available? And yes, it will be available. Um, I'll put it up late. It sometimes takes 24 hours to come up. But if you go to the website, biba.com, and click on the webinar section, you will find that uh, uh, you can find the uh, recording. We've uh, had a couple of questions on uh, cutting out queen cells. What tool do you use, Roger? Um, uh, some of them don't actually need very much at all. Um, they put them on like, like legs, um, so you can you can you can get away away with that. I generally use um, a sharp knife. Let, whoop, hang on. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that sort of knife, if they're sharp, um, uh, you, you, you're okay. Um, I've used um, hive tool, but I tend to use a sharp hive tool. I don't like these blunt ended ones. Uh, so yeah, uh, cut them out. Um, you've got to be careful of wires, obviously, um, but you can see where the wires go in the, in the combs and uh, you, can, uh, you can avoid them. Okay, and another th question, how long can the queen cell last after cutting from the hive? Oh, huh. Huh. how long you got? <laughs> if you put it on the front seat of your car in full sun, or if you put it in full sun, it isn't gonna last very long at all. Um, in general, the older it is, the longer they will last. And you can probably keep them out of the hive sometimes three, four hours or more, um, you know, and you can tell if they're, if they're fairly close to emerging. Uh, the old boy that uh, taught me in early days, he used to wear a cap 
and uh, he handled bees for other people. Uh, that, that, that was his living. And uh, uh, if early in the day he came across queen cells, he cut them out, put them in his cap, and uh, they, he, he very often needed them towards the end of the day. But of course, you've got the body, body warmth uh, then. Um, yeah, you, you need to keep them uh, uh, quite warm. It'd be interesting to know why the question was asked because if it's a case of cutting a map at say of a, a full colony, if you've got a nucleus that's queenless, sometimes you can bank them for um, you know a day or so, um, and with a, a nucleus, unless it's absolutely bursting with bees, it's unlikely that it will swarm. Uh, so if let's say you put three or four queen cells uh, in there. Um, you can, uh, uh, if, if one emerges, the chances are they won't, they won't swarm. Um, you can put them in those hair curlers, but you've got to do a little bit of, a um, little bit of tweaking to get to get them in. Um, but as I say, it'd be interesting to know why the person asked. If they've got a, uh, uh, an out apiary, let's say half hour away, half hour drive away. Um, if it's uh, fairly well advanced, you can uh, easily take a queen cell out, uh, perhaps put it in your top pocket or something, um, you know, keep, keep it fairly warm, uh, it won't be a problem. But if it's only just sealed, um, you, you'll probably lose it. Okay, because we had another question, can you move queen cells just after they are sealed? Uh, yes, you can do. <clears throat> um, but then all sorts of things happen. Um, the great thing about a queen cell when it's a, about to emerge is that um, it takes, what, three or four days for an emergency cell to get sealed. Um, if, uh, if you've got, let's say, five days or six days to uh, go with your normal queen cell, um, what can happen is if it's a biggish colony, they can swarm on that and leave the emergency cell to, um, to take over the colony because bees don't know their emergency cells. Okay. And a uh, comment that you mentioned young queens being superseded during the summer months. Do you think this is a response to varroa or commercialization of queen breeding? And uh, he's mentioned the opposite. <laughs> often sees his bees supersede at almost impossible times during autumn. Sorry, I didn't pick that. So somebody... The, his uh, bees supersede at impossible times during the autumn. Oh, well, that's natural. Uh, towards the end of the year, um, in, in my area, uh, I know I'm in the south, uh, but any time, na this is naturally, uh, any time between about the middle of July, right through the middle of September, I've had um, queens mated in October on many occasions. Um, now, that is natural. What isn't natural is right, right now, or you know, uh, April, May, June, July. That, that's not natural, especially with young queens. Okay. I've got another one. Somebody who's just set up their first hive, and how long can he expect before he sees queen cells and needs to think about managing swarms. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's listening or not, but we've got a young uh, member who bought a nuke commercially um, early this year, or he acquired a nuke. How, how he got it, I don't know. That swarmed, I think, a month ago. So, it, it depends. So it's got to be prepared and start a weekly. Always, always, yeah, I mean, you, you, you can have nukes, um, uh, nukes swarm. If anybody tells you a nuke won't swarm, don't believe them because they jolly well can. I've had one go this year. Um, it, was, it was my own fault. Um, I'm, I made it up with um, a couple of frames of uh, sealed brood, which is what I warn other people not to do. And I was a day or so late getting back. I, I, I knew it was um, 
going to be a problem. I was a day or, day or two late getting back and uh, they've gone. Okay, I've now got somebody who has an elderly queen still laying in her fifth season. In the past two months there have been two supersedure cells, although no, no supersedure has taken place. A third is now on the comb. Should she remove the old girl to give this larva a chance? Or leave nature to take its course. Let nature take its course. That's I good. would, these days, quite honestly, I would, I'm uh, not, uh, uh, I'm questioning whether queens actually live, for, genuinely live five years. If they're not clipped, they're not marked. Um, it's not always easy to tell. It's surprising how often um, a colony will change queens during the summer. It really is. Uh, it was for green teach in April. We, we, we've had a couple and haven't noticed them, and we do fortnight checks. Okay, another one. If you have colonies producing queen cells and still a queen present, if you remove the cells, will they ever stop building queen cells? Um, they can do. It depends if you do something else. Um, what sort of queen cells? If they're supersedure cells, uh, then they'll just carry on, usually. Uh, if they're swarm cells, they might give up, but you need to do something else, like add supers or, you know, give extra space or something like that. Um, what I haven't said is that right at this very moment, at Whisper Green Teaching Apiary, we've got a, a, a colony with a queen laying away, absolutely fine, no problem, no sign of reduction in line or anything like that. Would you believe we've got both swarm cells and emergency cells in the same colony? Now, that just simply should not happen because you've got um, different pheromones telling the, the, the bees different things. But these, all these strange sort of things have only just started happening in the last 20 years. Okay, I've got another one. Don't you think that if on a single brood box, no matter if you had supers for space, the actual brood box still gets overpopulated, causing swarming, but with some colonies to add extra brood space? Um, you, yeah, the, um, I think I mentioned, oh, it was to, um, uh, I gave a question and answer session to Mayo. Um, uh, Beekeepers Association, and this question was almost uh, asked then. Um, the size of the brood chamber that is needed is relative to the type of bees you've got. So if you've got um, bees with a non-prolific queen, they will quite happily um, survive in a single brood chamber, summer and winter. If you've got a prolific queen, of course they won't. And um, what, how many, I've now got 25 colonies in my garden and I think I've had one attempt to swarm and we got over 20 in Whisper Green Teach in April and certainly one, possible, I doubt if there's another one. So, okay, we're, we're fairly low swarming um, uh, this year. Um, but if we'd have got uh, prolific queens, um, I, th I, th I think they'd have been out and gone. It, the size of brood chamber is relative to the, uh, the type of bee you've got. Okay, I've got another one. You said that the bees thin the cells just before emergence. Does the new queen also chew herself out? Yes, <laughs> um, very definitely. Um, if uh, in fact, uh, as I, uh, I do now, I generally cage my uh, queens and uh, the bees can't get, can't get out of the cells. Worker bees can't get out of the cells uh, and the queens just chew through from inside. Okay. And uh, a question here. Um, someone who's never had more than three cells, either swarm, supersedure or emergency, in any of his five colonies. Is this very unusual? Um, yeah, really unusual. Um, five colonies. I would suggest they're probably in an area 
um, of a sort of with a sort of harsh climate. And my guess is um, that they've got what are called supersedure bees, um, and they they very definitely don't build very many uh, queen cells. You know, if I go to some of the outlying areas where there's a um, the, the, the 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 climate is harsh. Uh, you just don't see the number of queen cells that you do um, elsewhere. Okay, and I've got another who say they have a colony with a sealed queen cell. If they produce more cells, is it worth removing all cells except the sealed one to avoid swarming? So there's one sealed cell. One sealed cell. You see what the question says. Right. <clears throat> if you if you've got an unclipped queen um, and you leave a sealed cell, I'm surprised they're they're still there, because I would have thought they would have, um, uh, they would have swarmed. Did can you read the question out again, please? Yeah. Nick? I have a colony with a sealed queen cell. If they produce more cells, is it worth removing all cells except the sealed to avoid swarming? Well, if you if you've got a sealed queen cell, that is really the the trigger for the colony to go to swarm. So maybe they've swarmed already and left the cell. I I, I don't know, Nick. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think, I mean, we've gone well over the hour. Um, and I think probably we'd better wind it up now, Roger. I think I've gone through all the questions, tried to merge similar ones together. Okay. Um, so I think that's about it. Oh, well, just one thing, Roger, a little maths question. Huh. What, what does three times eight equal? Three eighths of fifteen. Try it again. Yeah. Three threes are eight. Three eighths of fifteen. Roger, I think we'd better teach you some maths. Three threes no. are nine. No. Three no, 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 no. No, that's uh, that, that, that's one of the myths of beekeeping. Misinformation, that is, Nick. <laughs> believe, believe me, honest. Right. Okay, okay, well, honest. <laughs> three. Three threes are eight, three eights are 15. Right, oh, well, we've got a new method of uh, calculating. <laughs> you you don't right. need calculators and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, Roger, and thank you to everyone who's been watching. Okay, and well, thanks very much, Nick, for um, uh, hosting, and thanks very much, everybody, for, uh, for listening. Uh, it, it, is that both of them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, good night, everybody. Bye, good night. everyone.